Hey guys, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I'm sharing with you some of the easiest recipes to make on Christmas Day. Now before I jump into anything, I just wanna say thank you for your kind words. I had COVID the last 14 days and I'm feeling so much better, so thank you so much. Now after being sick that long, I realized Christmas is coming so quickly. So I thought today I would share some simple, easy recipes that would be perfect for Christmas Day because we don't wanna spend all of our time cooking. So these recipes are super easy, don't take a ton of time, and your whole family will love them. All right guys, let's jump into the recipes. The first recipe I'm making is our slow cooker honey baked ham. We're doing it in the slow cooker today because I like to put it in on Christmas morning and then I let it cook all day long. Okay, so I took off kind of like the netting and the, and the first wrapping, I guess, and I put it into my slow cooker and then I'm going to take off this one in here just because there's so many juices. We want those juices still in our slow cooker. So, <laughs> love my little kids' scissors. Don't worry, I wash them after. And we want them to be um, like the flat side down. So this is sliced and it is already cooked. Yeah, it does look good, huh? Okay, then you're gonna take a third cup of water and just pour it around the ham. Okay, so we have our saucepan. We're going to just go to medium high heat right now. We're gonna make the yummy sauce that goes on top. Now most ham comes with some sort of seasoning. I just like to make mine myself. Ooh, there is a brown sugar chunk in there. We'll smash that in. Okay, so we have half a cup of brown sugar, about a half a cup of honey, about two tablespoons or so of Dijon mustard. I'm gonna hurry and just mix this in really quick so we don't burn it to the bottom. I'm actually gonna turn down the temperature just a little bit. There we go. Okay, we'll add a few more seasonings. Okay, then we have half a teaspoon of cinnamon we'll dump in there, and then a fourth teaspoon of nutmeg. And we're just gonna mix this all together until all the sugar is dissolved. We don't want chunky sugar on our ham. All of our sugar is dissolved, so that took maybe like, what, two minutes to make sure that's all dissolved. We're just gonna pour it over the ham. Now I like to slowly pour it, and then I'll get like a basting brush and kind of baste it in between layers too, because I like it on all the pieces. Okay, so with this sauce, I like to kind of brush it around and then brush it on the layers too, just because it just tastes a little better when you can taste it in every bite. Okay, and you're gonna go ahead and put your lid on. This is pretty full, so I'm actually gonna press down a little bit. It's okay if it has a little bit of a lip, but if it has a lot more, you can actually do a foil tint on top of your hand if you need to, and then, yeah, it'll work out just the same. You can cook it on high for about two to four hours, or over here, we're gonna go to low, and I'm gonna cook it for about six hours. That way, I can kind of do it around lunchtime, and it'll be all ready for dinner. All right, the ham is done. It looks great, I just have to figure out how to pull it out real quick and cut it all up. <laughs> all right, Sarah, taste test the ham, what do you think? Thumbs up? Thumbs up, so um, give it a five. That means super good. Super good. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. Bye. Bye. Okay, the next recipe I'm making is our ranch roasted potatoes that only is three ingredients, so it's super fast and easy to throw together. Okay, so I'm gonna start with about two pounds of potatoes. I'm gonna finish cutting this up. Now, it calls for russet potatoes, but I like to use red potatoes in this recipe. It just, I love red potato skins and how they taste. Okay, so then you're gonna put your potatoes either in a bowl, I like to use just a plastic bag and just dump them right in there. Then you're gonna do about a fourth a cup of vegetable oil. I actually like to use olive oil with this recipe. So we're just gonna do some olive oil. Take it off my little holder. If you've seen these, I use these a lot when I do freezer meals. It also works well for this recipe too. So then we're just gonna take that off and just kind of mix all around. You want all the oil to cover the potatoes. Now once it's all mixed with your oil, you're gonna go ahead and add just one package of ranch seasoning. We're just gonna dump that right in on top. Don't worry, we'll mix this around. Go ahead and close that up again. And then, just like you did before, we're just mixing it around. We're all ready to go. We're just gonna dump this onto our cookie sheet. Now you just wanna spread these around so it's a single layer of potatoes. They'll cook a lot faster that way. All right, you're gonna bake these at 450 for about 35 minutes. Okay, 
potatoes are done. All right, then we're just kind of scraping them, moving them around a little bit. Okay, you ready to taste these potatoes? All right, what do you think of that? Usually like potatoes. Kind of good. Kind of good? Because it was. Does it kind of taste like a french fry? Yeah. If you dipped it in ketchup, would you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the next recipe in our Christmas dinner is our apple cranberry walnut chopped salad. Now I love this because you literally can just throw everything together and it's all done. So first we're gonna start with one cup of craisins, right, or dried cranberries. You wanna dump those in, Sarah? Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, then one cup of chopped walnuts. These are kind of big walnuts, so you can chop them smaller if you want to, but I like them big. You wanna pour those in? Good job. And then we have about eight slices of cooked, baked, cut up bacon. You wanna pour that in too? Mm -hmm. We just use like the bacon bits here to make life a lot easier, right? Okay, so we actually started with about eight cups of salad in here. So if you have eight cups, then you'll wanna use about five ounces of feta. That might seem like a lot, but it tastes really good. If you don't love feta, you don't have to add this in. Okay, next we just cut up two of our, pretty much your favorite apple. I wouldn't suggest using Granny Smith, it's a little too sour, but any other apple would work just fine. So we have two apples. I left the skin on because I like this one. Okay, now one thing I love about this dressing is it's actually two dressings mixed. So we're gonna take some light balsamic and do about a fourth cup of this. Nice, and I'll just pour that into a bowl. And then this is my favorite. If you guys have not tried this before, I highly suggest it. It's called Brianna's or Brianna's, I'm not sure. It's the, the poppy seed dressing. So we're gonna do three fourths cup of this. Then just go ahead and mix this together. I know it might sound <laughs> weird mixing the dressings, but oh, it makes it taste so good. Okay, then we're just gonna pour the dressing on top and then mix it all together very carefully. I highly suggest using a big bowl. <laughs> All done, ready. That literally took about five minutes. All right, Ensley is gonna taste test our salad first, yeah? yeah. Hmm, that's really good. I really like the dressing of it. I will give it a five out of a five. Nice. Now, if you need one more thing, I love making Instant Pot stuffing. Now, there are a few more ingredients in this one, but I'm gonna teach you a few simple things so it'll make making it a whole lot easier. Okay, we're gonna first start by pushing the saute button. Sarah, you wanna push that one right there? Mm -hmm. Thank you, good job. So while it heats up, we're gonna cut up all our vegetables. To simplify some steps, I like to get the chopped mushrooms so I don't even have to chop those and I love to get chopped onions, like have it all chopped, ready to go. All right, and then the celery that I got is all chopped, ready to eat, all washed, ready to go. So it makes it a whole lot easier too if you're trying to hurry on Christmas. Okay, so we just need about a cup of celery, so I have four here, we're just gonna chop them up. And I'm doing this backwards right now because <laughs> so my hand's not in the way of the camera, so please ignore my cutting skills. Actually go the other way. It feels so awkward. And then we just have some two apples that we're gonna chop up. I know that you can buy some chopped, but I don't like bagged apples. I like them <laughs> fresh. Sometimes the helper gets a little hungry. Oh my. <laughs> okay, our Instant Pot is hot, so we're gonna add a half cup of butter and then wait until that melts all the way. All right, once your butter is all melted, we're gonna go ahead and dump in our onion about three-fourths cup of mushroom, so I'm just gonna eyeball it there. It's okay if you have a little more than what it says with mushrooms, I love mushrooms. Then we're just gonna dump in our two apples and then our cup of celery. Okay, and we need a little bit of seasoning, so we have half a teaspoon of sage, then we have a fourth teaspoon of thyme leaves, and then a fourth teaspoon of pepper. Okay, then we're just gonna mix this all together and let it simmer for about two minutes. Okay, so I have one cup of water in here. I'm just gonna add one cup of chicken broth too. We want some liquid. Nice and easy in there. Then we're going to add this into our Instant Pot and heat up this liquid. That might take a minute or two just to get nice and hot. All right, once your liquid and everything's nice and hot, you're gonna add 10 ounces of your favorite stuffing. Then you just wanna make sure your stuffing is all the way wet with all the liquid. Okay, so we're gonna push cancel. We don't want it on saute anymore, but we do want it on keep 
warm. So that's how that stuffing's gonna cook. Okay, I'm still mixing this around to make sure everything is combined. We're gonna put the lid on and we're gonna let it cook or I guess just stay on keep warm pretty much until you're ready to serve. So this has been on keep warm for about 30 minutes. I highly suggest that. So we're gonna pull this lid off. Oh, it's looking good. Everything is soft and everything's cooked through. I'm a fan. Ansley's also gonna do taste <laughs> test of stuffing. Yeah. Ready? Mm-hmm. I personally love stuffing, so I'll give it a five out of five. Perfect, awesome. Sarah, you like it too? So growing up, my mom always made a delicious drink on Christmas. This is our citrus party punch. It takes about two minutes to throw together. So if you want a fun drink, I highly suggest trying this out. Okay, so this recipe we're actually cutting in half because it's so big. So we're actually gonna do about two liters of ginger ale. We're just gonna pour it into the bowl. Then we have some pineapple juice. We're gonna do about two cups of pineapple juice. Just pour it right in. Then we have about two cups of cranberry juice or a juice cocktail. All right, two cups of this, you ready? Mm, mm, mm. Okay, now this is the fun part, especially if it's for a party or something like that. We're gonna add six ounces of cranberries. So we're just gonna do about half this bag. Don't worry, we did wash them. Okay, then we're gonna add some fruit into it. Now this is so cute if it's like in a glass container because the fruit floats to the top. So we have one orange. Yeah, you wanna help me? We have one lime in here and one lemon. Yeah, more limes, all the limes. That looks so good, Sarah. Okay, get your cup over here so we can pour it in. Do you wanna pour it over here? There we go. We'll just pour up your drink. Ooh, it looks so yummy. Now you don't wanna drink those things, huh? So we'll probably get a straw for you. Will that work? All right. This is how it looks like. Thank you. You gonna do a taste test? All right, stick it in and have a little zip. What do you think? Mm. It's a little spicy. Spicy. <laughs> Can I try it? Mm -hmm. well, it's good. Oh, it's good. I like it. <laughs> so, tingly like pop, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the last recipe I'm making is our Andy's Mint Cookies. Now of course you need cookies for Santa, so this is actually the perfect recipe to make the night before so Santa can have some cookies and so you guys can have some cookies on Christmas. All you need is one package of Devil's Food Cake, so we're gonna just dump in that whole package. Then we just have half a cup of vegetable oil and then just two eggs. Ooh, that one's not happening today. There we go. As long as we don't get shells, it doesn't really matter, right? That's what I tell myself. Okay, then you just mix this together. It's so simple. It's literally like four ingredient cookies. All right, once it starts to thicken up, we're gonna not use the whisk anymore and just use a spoon. Mix that, the rest by hand. It really is like will form into a pretty thick dough. Okay, so you need to roll them into one inch balls, you guys. I'm pretty lazy, so I'm gonna use this one inch cookie scoop and we'll just put it right onto my cookie sheet. All right, so we're gonna bake them at 350 for six to nine minutes. I'm gonna check them at six. So these came right out of the oven, so we're actually just gonna put an Andy's Mint right on top. Can you help me? Andy's Mint right on top, very gently. Good job. Okay, now if you waited too long and your cookies are not hot anymore, you can always stick these in the oven just for like another minute or so. Because mm -hmm. you want the, <laughs> thank you. Because you want the Andy's mints to melt. That's gonna be your frosting. Yeah. All right, so I let them sit in there for about a minute so they're nice and soft. And we're just gonna spread it around. All right, you ready to taste test the cookies? Yeah, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna try that one, okay, grab it. Mm. All right, ready? Okay. Mm. You gonna rank it? One, two, three, four, or five. 10? A five? 10? A lot, how about a five? That's our highest, is it yummy? Yum. All right guys, if you want more Christmas dinner ideas, my video from last year has some different ones that you might like. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.